to um, the video lectures for Math 141 Statistics at Morton College. I'm your instructor, uh, Dr. Scott Spaniel, and this time we're going to talk about section 6.3. So in uh, the last section, we looked at a discrete probability distribution called the binomial probability distribution. Uh, and so what we're going to look at this time is the Poisson uh, probability distribution which is uh, similar, uh, kind of in the th same vein, but definitely for different situations. So you can go ahead and take out uh, your video um, lecture notes to follow along if you want. Um, they can be found in the Blackboard course or on my math lab. Uh, and we're going to look at section 6.3, like I said. So another discrete probability distribution is the Poisson. Uh, Poisson? I don't know. I'm, I'm working on that. My uh, wife takes French, and so she's helping me with my pronunciation or took French, um, distribution. Uh, and it was named after the French uh, mathematician Simeon Denis Poisson. Um, this probability distribution can be used to compute probabilities of experiments in which the random variable X counts the number of occurrences, successes, of a particular event within a specified interval, usually time or space. Um, so this is something like if you work uh, at a store and you know that on average during uh, a time during the lunch hour, 27 people come in. You could use that to calculate what's the probability that five people come in uh, in the first 10 minutes of the day. So that's the idea. So a random variable X, uh, the number of successes in a fixed interval follows a Poisson process provided the following conditions are met. The probability of two or more successes in any sufficiently small subinterval is zero. For example, the fixed interval might be any time between zero and five. A subinterval could be any time between one and two seconds. So, for example, if you were going from zero to five minutes and your subinterval was one second, um, then you'd have the total number of subintervals would be in those five, in that five minutes would be 600. So that you couldn't have 600, uh, successes in that window because then you're, um, or anywhere near 600 because then there's the probability is too high for those individual small subintervals. Okay. So you need the overall number of successes in your time interval to, to not get, uh, not be too big basically is what that means. The probability of success is the same for any two intervals of equal length. Uh, the number of successes in any interval is independent of the number of successes in any other inter interval, provided the intervals are not overlapping. So the probability that somebody comes in in the first five minutes needs to be the same as the chance they come in in the next five minutes, and those two things have to be inter uh, independent of each other. So the mean and standard deviation of a Poisson random variable are as follows. A random variable X that follows a Poisson process with, par uh, with parameter lambda, the number of successes in the interval, has a mean or expected value and a standard deviation given by the uh, these two formulas. So the mean is the number of successes in an interval times the amount of time uh, elapsed, and the standard deviation is just the square root of that. A uh, Poisson probability distribution function uh, follows a fixed length and X follows a Poisson process with mean mu and the probability distribution of the function uh, for X is the probability of X equals the mean to the X power divided by X factorial times E, the Euler number E, to the power of the mean. You do not need to know that. Okay. Let's look at how to use this with our calculator. That's how this actually all comes about. about but let's look at... Um, one of these. So first of all, the mean for this, right, would be lambda, which is this little Greek letter here. So 0 0.07 times t, which is 10. So the mean here would be 0 0.7. And the standard deviation of x is just the square root of that. So 0 point, the square root of 0 0.7. which is 0 0.837, okay? Now we can do probabilities on this by using uh, class calc to graph these things, okay? So if I go into class calc, and if we go into our stat, 
distribution plot menu just like we did for the last section. And we look in here, we should see Poisson distribution right there, right? Okay, click on that. Once again, you could type in Poisson dist, uh, dist to type it in if you want. And all it needs in this case is our mean. And so our mean, right, was 0 0.7. It's lambda times x. Okay, lambda times 10. Uh, and then we can uh, zoom in on that or so we can see it. So there's our lambda times x. Okay. Um, and so basically what this says in this case is lambda is the number of successes in our interval. So um, if any given interval, we have uh, 0 0.07 successes and we have a length of time 10. These are now the number of successes we could have uh, in that time t. So uh, for p, for 4, if we just want to do exactly 4, we just type in 4, just like we did with the binomial distribution. We get a probability of 0 0.00. Uh, five zero if we round to four decimal places uh, it, So that was the first one, right? If I want to do the probability that of less than four successes So that would be the same thing as the probability that X is less than or equal to three, right? Because we're doing um, Discrete probability distribution. So less than four means I want three two one or zero so I could do CDF and I just put in less than or equal to three Right, and it highlights the th four bars I want, the ones that are less than or equal to three. So the probability of that is 0 0.9942. And then if we wanted to do greater than or equal to four, right, we just do four is less than or equal to x, just like we did in the last section, right? That's how we did uh, greater than or equal to, is we do, this is the same as the probability that four is less than or equal to x. So that's 0 0.00. 5, 8, right? If I round this off to four decimal places. So that's what we got. Those are the ones we've got so far. And then the last one, I just need to put in four as the lower bound and six as the upper bound. So four and then six, and it'll do four to six, which is 0 0.0057. And so that's the idea of how this function works. So now let's look at some applications. Where would you actually use this? That's what we're going to do. So the potholes on a major highway in the city of Chicago occur at a rate of 3.4 per mile. Compute the probability that the number of potholes over three miles of a randomly selected uh, highway. Okay. So in this case, our lambda is 3.4 because we get 3.4 per mile. And our T is the total interval. So our interval here is three miles. So that's our T. Whoops, sorry, I don't have this up on the screen. So here it is. So uh, lambda is 3.4 because we have 3.4 per mile. That's how many we have per, per interval, in this case, distance versus time. And then our total interval is, uh, so our total time is three minutes, three miles in this case. So we go into the Poisson distribution, we put in our mean. So our mean is going to be 3.4, um, sorry, 3.4. And then we can just do times uh, three. So you can just type it in there if you want. And so there's our distribution. I'm just going to get rid of these so we can start over. And there's our distribution. So that's uh, our mu here that we were putting in was 3.4 times three. So I just typed it in like that into our calculator. Right, so 3.4 times 3. And so we get our graph. So what is the, um, what's the probability that the number of potholes over 3 miles? So these are, all of these bars represent a certain number of potholes. So there's a 0 0.15, 0 0.015 chance of 17 potholes in a 3-mile stretch. So if I want exactly 2, I go over to 2 and it's 0 0.2, or I can type into PDF, what's the probability of 2 potholes? Uh, let me get rid of this because it's not working exactly right right now. So let's try that again. Well, it's not showing up, but it's 0 0.0019 is the probability of exactly two potholes. So if we want to do the probability of fewer than seven, that would be that x is less than or equal to six, right? Because that's equal to the probability that x is less than seven in a discrete probability distribution. So I can come in here and do CDF. 
and we can put in um, 6. X is less than or equal to 6. So there's a 0 0.1180 chance that I get s fewer than 7, which would be 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, or no potholes in a 3-mile stretch. And that's a pretty low probability, which I think we could all agree is a about right you would you're going to see probably more than six um you're probably have a pretty low chance of only seeing six potholes or fewer in a stretch of chicago highway and then at least seven would be the probability that x is greater than or equal to seven so we flip that around which remember for the for putting in is we're putting saying seven is less uh that's the probability that uh seven is less than or equal to x and so that's 0 0.8820 when we round it off it's 0 0.8820 the probability that x is those are the same we do 7 is less than or equal to x and then would it be unusual for a randomly selected three mile stretch of highway in chicago to can contain more than 15 potholes so to do that we want to answer what's the probability that x is greater than or equal to 15 which would be the same as the probability that 15 is less than or equal to x Okay, so we can go in here, change this 7 to a 15. And the probability of that is 0 0.0943. Right? That's the probability of all these ones to the right added together. So would that be unusual? Uh, the answer to that is no, right? Because that's not less than 5%. That's 9%. There's a 9% chance that if you drove down a randomly selected three-mile stretch of highway in Chicago, you would encounter at least 15 potholes. Okay, so that's the idea. So we calculate uh, lambda times t. We multiply lambda times t. That's what goes into the calculator. And then the plugging in is exactly the same as a binomial probability distribution. So with that in mind, why don't you all take a look at the one on page 17 and see if you can do that one. Pause the video and try it. And then when you're done, hit play and we'll go through the answer. Okay, so now that you've had a chance to try it, let's go through this together. So the phone calls to a computer software help desk occur at a rate of 2.1 per minute. So that's our lambda. Between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. Compute the probability that the number of calls between 3 p.m. and 3.15 p.m. So that's a T of 5. Right? That's 5 minutes. 3.1 per minute. Right? So that's a 5-minute time frame. So that's our lambda. So mu sub x is 2.1 times 5. So we'll just type that in here. 2.1 times 5. Okay, and I'll zoom in on it. And let's clear out this stuff so we can see it. Okay, so there's our uh, Poisson uh, probability distribution. So what's the probability exactly 8? Well, that's just how tall is bar 8 or use PDF. So that's 0 0.101. Right? 0 0.101. Fewer than 8 would be the probability that x is less than or equal to 8. Right? So we just bring up CDF, uh, and we want x to be less than or equal to 8. So put that in, and we get 0 0.2794. And then at least 8, we want it to be, oh, except I did, we want fewer than 8. I did that wrong, right? So it's not less than or equal to 8. It's less than 8 which means we need to do the probability that x is less than or equal to 7. Right? So we put in 7 here instead. Right? And that gives us 0 0.1785. And then we want at least 8. So that's 8 or more. So we want this bar to the right. That's everything to the right of this. So we put in 8. It's less than or equal. So the probability that... 8 is less than or equal to x is 0 0.8215. Okay. So that gives us those two answers that look like that. And then the last one is between 2 and 10 inclusive. So now we can just go in here and put in 2 and 10 between 2 and 10, and that is 0 0.5204. Okay. And so that's the idea. So that's how uh, we can use class calc to do these distributions. So that's the idea um, here for Poisson um, distribution. So 
Let's change back to this one. Won't let me change back now. But anyway, um, so that's it for this video lecture. Uh, don't forget, if you have questions, feel free to email me, send me a remind message, or ask in class, uh, or in my office hours. Uh, and that's it for today. Uh, we'll see you all uh, next time when we're going to start Chapter 7.